Hello everyone, YouTube channel DRS Maths welcomes you all. Before we are going to start this topic, I would like to request you till now if you haven't follow the DRS Maths at Unacademy as well as on YouTube channel, then please follow the DRS Maths and subscribe the DRS Maths at both the channels and watch the videos by DRS Maths on several topics. Right? If you have any doubt, any confusion, please ask, please write in comment. We will try to remove your queries. We will try to solve your queries. Right? So, let us start this topic. The data. What is the data? Data is a kind of information. The information we are gathering, we are taking. Sometimes it is in a meaningful information. Sometimes the informations are not meaningful. Generally, we are connecting the data, we are collecting the data, those are unorganized. Unorganized data is also known as raw data. The organized data which we have, that is meaningful. For example, let us see, the first example is to calculate, to collect the marks scored by the students of a class in the mathematics unit test. Second thing, if I am asking you, to find out the number of storybooks read by five students. Third thing, if I'm asking you the runs made by a batsman in the last 10 test matches, the thing which you are going to collect in above these three conditions, all things is known as the data. That is the information collected in all such cases is called data, right? The next thing is that data is usually collected in the context of a situation that we want to study. For example, to calculate average marks of a student, a teacher will write the marks of all students, arrange the marks and then intercept accordingly. It means that the data is generally calculated for a situation that about which we want a study or we want some information. Next thing is, that I have already told you, the usually data we available to us that is unorganized and which is in the unorganized form and that is also known as the raw data. To draw meaningful inferences, we need to organize the unorganized data systematically. Right? For example, a group of students was asked for their favorite subjects. Right? Then the result were the students are First student says art, second maths, third science, fourth English, fifth is mathematics, then arts, then English, then mathematics, then English, then arts, then science, then arts, then science, then again science, then English, then mathematics, then arts, then English, then arts, and then science. So this is the data. The students have given their choices and we have written here. But from this data we cannot say anything. We cannot come to any conclusion. Right? So such kind of data is known as raw data. And why it is a raw data? Because if I am going to ask which is the most liked subject and which one is the least liked subject, then on the basis of this information you cannot say. For this we have to arrange this data. So I am going to arrange this data in a form of a table. Right? Then if I am going to arrange the data in this tabular form in which in the first column I have written the subjects, all the four subjects, those are arts, mathematics, science and English. Then in the, the number in the tally marks as well as the number of students in the numerical form. Then I have for the arts, here I came and count arts 1, arts 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Then I have written here, in the arts there are 6 students, that is number 6. In the tally it is written 6 like this. For up to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, they draw the 4 lines and 1 crossed line, it means forward total 5 lines, this one is 6 lines. So after 5, then again up to 9, these 1, 2, 3, 4 lines, then again 5th line will be joined them. So this is the tally representation. So in the arts, there are the 6 students, it is 6. For mathematics, we have counted here 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we have written in the mathematics 4, number of student is 4. In science, there is 5. How count is, this is 1, then again here it is 2, 3, 4 and 5. There is none other. So in the science there is 5 students, it is written in the 5. English, that is again 5 and written 5. So now seeing this table we can answer. The most liked subject is, that is the number of students in a subject, maximum number is 6 and 6 is for arts. So the most liked subject is art. 
simple then least like subjects so least like subject means that is the minimum number of the students the minimum number of student is 4 in mathematics so the least like subject is mathematics simple so what you have we have seen when we arrange this unorganized data it gives some inferences some information clearly next thing is the word used frequency frequency gives the number of times that a particular entry occurs and it is represented by a table known as frequency distribution table we can say that this table is a frequency distribution frequency gives the number of times a particular thing has appeared arts six means arts appears six times mathematics appears four times science five times english five times so the number which gives the number of times a thing a value a particular value is represented is appears that number is known as frequency and it is represented by a table which is known as frequency distribution table now the next thing is a data can also be arranged in the two different forms that is in grouped form or ungrouped form for example let us see understood it by example example is marks of students in the english this is the marks of the some students in english that is 4 5 7 9 11 4 7 11 9 5 4 double 9 11 5 5 7 11 7 9 4 5 7 and 11 11 right this is the total marks obtained by some students in english then now if we are going to represent it as marks that is marks are 4 5 7 9 and 11 there is none other so write 4 marks 5 marks 7 9 and 11 marks right now the write down the number of students who are getting 4 who are getting 5 who are getting 7 who are getting 9 who are getting 11 the number of students getting 4 marks are 4 that is 1 2 then it is 3 it is 4 it's 4 then uh, getting 5 marks are 2 3 4 and there is someone here it is 5 1 2 3 and 4 5 the so 5 marks is 5 7 marks is 1 2 3 4 5 so 7 marks is 5 9 marks is also 5 11 marks is 6 so by seeing this table i can generally predict that the number of a student getting 4 marks are 4 getting 11 marks are 6 so such kind of representation is known as ungrouped data right if we are going to represent the same data in a form of a groups that is we categorize number in a range that is 0 to 10 10 to 20 then the number of students getting marks between 0 to 10 are the students who are getting the marks up to 9 so we are going to collect their mark numbers 4 5 9 5 14 5 19 so there are 19 students who, who scored the marks between 0 to 10 these are the number of students and then 10 to 20 there is only 6 students who are getting 6 marks when the data is represented in this form then it is known as the grouped data called as grouped data right so this kind of table which is represented in this form is known as grouped frequency distribution grouped frequency distribution right so here you have seen the classes 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 30 these groups are also called as class intervals are also called as class right the next thing which is asked in the exams and which is required that is the class limits lower class limit and upper class limit the first value of any class is called lower class limit the second value of any class or group is called the upper class limit right the groups which is ended at a number start the next group is started from the same number such kind of groups are called continuous groups like 0 to 10 end with 10 starts with 10 10 to 20 and with at 20 starts with 20 20 to 30 then next 30 to 40 40 to 50 etc such kind of groups are known as continuous groups and it is a convention that a number appears in the two different groups then at which if the value is 10 then that value 10 will be kept in which group in this group or in this group so to remove this confusion it is convention which is accepted worldwide that the upper class limit of continuous groups is not included in that class it means the value 10 is not included in this group because it is upper class limit so it is included in the next group similarly 20 is not included in this it included in this 
30 is not included in this it will be included in the next one if the groups are continuous right next thing is discontinuous groups the discontinuous groups are 0 to 9 10 to 19 20 to 99 20 to 29 up to so on in this you are seeing the upper limit and its lower limit both are not the same lower upper limit lower limit both are not the same there are some gap so thus this kind of groups are known as discontinuous groups next thing width or size of a class intervals that is the upper class limit of any group minus lower class limit of the same group is gives the class size or the class width like 20 minus 10 10 10 minus 0 10 30 minus 20 10 so these are the width of the group width or size of a class intervals by like upper class limit minus lower class limit will gives you the width or size of the group next word is used class mark class mark is what the upper limit plus lower limit by two for example if we have some classes here and we want the class marks class mark for 0 to 10 add both the numbers and take their half that is 10 plus 0 by 2 that is 5 10 plus 20 10 to 20 it is 10 plus 20 by 2 so 10 plus 20 30 by 2 15 20 to 30 it is 30 plus 20 by 2 25 30 to 40 30 plus 40 70 by 2 it is 35 so the value obtained by adding both the limits and taking half of that the value we obtained that is known as class mark right the next word is used range or range of a data to range of any data presented to us is the highest value of that data minus lowest value of that data for example 4 3 7 11 19 12 5 13 12 and 21 this is a range this is a data if you want the range of this so take the highest value 21 and the lowest value 3 take their differences the range of the same data is 18 so this is the way to calculate the range the next thing which you should know that is adjustment factor what is adjustment factor basically this term this word is used for the discontinuous groups suppose we have discontinuous group 0 to 9 10 to 19 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 for the adjustment groups we are taking the lower value of a group minus high upper value that is lower class limit of a group minus upper class limit of previous group that is 10 minus 9 or 20 minus 19 30 minus 29 40 minus 39 it's like that that is lower class limit of a group minus upper class limit of previous group so if we have taken 20 so 20 is subtracted by 19 gives 1 30 subtracted by 29 gives 1 40 subtracted by 39 gives 1 so this value is 1 half of this value is 0 0.5 this 0 0.5 is known as adjustment factor this adjustment factor is subtracted from all the lower class limits and this adjustment factor is added to the all upper class limits for example if these are the groups 0 0.5 is subtracted from all and 0 0.5 is added to all if we are going to subtract 0 0.5 from 0 it is minus 0 0.5 adding 0 0.5 to 9 it is 9.5 adding 0 0.5 to 19 19.5 29.5 39.5 49.5 so taking a half that is 0 0.5 subtracted to minus 0 0.5 10 may say 0 0.5 minus kya to kya milega 9.5 20 minus 0 0.5 that is 19.5 30 minus 0 0.5 that is 29.5 40 minus 0 0.5 that is 39.5 which I have written here minus 0 0.5 9.5 9.5 19.5 19.5 29.5 29.5 39 39.5 39.5 to 49.5 now this that discontinuous group converted as a continuous group so to convert a discontinuous group to a continuous group the thing required that is adjustment factor and it is lower class limit of a group minus upper class limit of previous group and half of that this is the adjustment factor by this way we calculate so this is all about the some basic points of the statistics i hope you would understood this and if you have liked this video if you think this is meaningful Please share these videos to each and everyone and please, please, please subscribe the DRS Maths at YouTube and also follow the DRS Maths and Unacademy and watch each and every video. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will meet in the next video.